GH Dog TV, your number one TV for all dog lovers. Hi, my name is Apostle Josiah Obin Jr. of Obin Bubbles. You are watching GH Dog TV. Keep watching. Welcome dog lovers, this is another episode on GH Dog TV and as you can see I'm right here with this beautiful Doberman. Today I'm visiting a Doberman kennel and trust me if you love Dobermans this is the right video for you. My name is Solo One, you can call me the dog blogger and if this is your first time of watching a video on this channel you kindly subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon for more exclusive and amazing dog content. This program is probably sponsored by Emmy dog feed and puppy milk you want the right dog feed nutritious puppy milk for your puppies just link up with them their number is on our screen 0244820350 0244820350 now let's go for a quick break don't go anywhere stick and stay my name is solo one you can call me the dog blogger Looking for a complete balanced and highly nutritious feed for your dogs? Then your answer is here. Feed Eminent. Carefully composed and filled with a high level of protein of animal origin, Eminent Dog Feed provides your dogs with an adequate amount of energy to keep them in the perfect condition. Contact Eminent Dog Feed on 0244-820-350. Looking for quality? Feed Eminent. Welcome back. I'm sure you love the scenes right here on the training field. Lots of Dobermans right here. Now, the location is North Legon Agoba in the greater Accra region of Ghana. And the name of this kennel is Pioneers of Africa. Pioneers of Africa. And the breeder I'm having right here on today's show, he has been in this for over 30 years. Allow me to introduce my guest for today's show. Boss, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, welcome to our premises. This is our camp. And we call it our camp because um, we have a training facility here. And the dogs are here a lot most of the time because they get trained every day. Mm -hmm. And coming here, I'm impressed seeing lots of Dobermans doing the training here and there. That, that's really impressive. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so most of the Dobermans are, the adults are mine. And then um, most of the people that buy dogs from me bring the dogs back for training. Um, some of them take them other places, but most of them come back here. But we also do have, um, like, we have two pit bulls that are 
on the premises uh, on training. Yeah, so then, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll let them, I'll show them to you in a little bit. Yeah. Nice one, that's beautiful. So even before we get to the um, getting up close with you and all of that, I've gotten to know that you also do training at this premises as well for people's dogs and everything. Yes. Um, so basically, the way it works out is that um, for most of the trainers, we don't have pro any professional. We have maybe like a couple of professional trainers in the country. Most of the other people are self-taught. Um, they're not accredited by anybody. Um, so we're trying to, because the types of dogs that I breed um, require training, I'm making, I made, uh, making investments in, in training, you know, to build the capacity of the trainers locally, generally speaking, all, not just for the people who I work with, um, but for all the trainers. Um, and it's not just limited to Ghana. We're, we're looking at trainers across West Africa. You know, building the capacity so that we can actually get into dog sports, which is what we're training for. We're training for a number of the different sports. Yeah, they're about the most popular. They're about five, five to seven dog sports that are um, popular. You know, but some of them require a lot more logistics than others. You know, like dog diving, you need a big pool. I don't have the capacity to have a big pool here. So we're not doing anything like that yet, you know, but all of those things are in the works. Yeah, not at this location though, but um, I'm talking to collaborators um, to sort all of that out. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's beautiful. Now, before we delve much into the Doberman, I know that you have in-depth knowledge about a lot of things when it comes to dogs. We are going to talk more about that, but then um, before we get to that part. I'd like you to formally introduce yourself to my lovely viewers, your name and all of that. Okay, my name is Kobianda. Um, so, I, I, I've been, I had, I've had Doberman since I was probably like about 15 years or so. Um, and I'm 50 years now, so. Um, I've been learning about Dobermans. I mean, before Dobermans, I had like a German Shepherd before I've had a, um, a Boa Bull, I've had a Rottweiler, I've had a Bull Mastiff, you know. Um, but uh, once you get bitten by a double man, you, you, you get addicted, you know. I, I, that's what I believe. I tell people all the time. Um, so, so basically, for that amount of time, I've been learning about the double man and learning about breeding, generally speaking. Um, the, apart from a gap of about 10 years when I lived outside the country, I didn't have a dog at all, you know. And on a return to, to Ghana, um, I realized that a lot of people were buying dogs um, and a lot of people were trying to breed, but uh, they didn't have the depth of knowledge in, in order to breed, to do the right thing. Um, so, I mean, I, I got engaged. Um, I got invited to KUG because they had started setting it up. Um, so I got engaged, I'm invited to help set it up. Um, it took a while, but then after a while, I realized that it was a grouping of Boabu breeders more than anything. You know, so the Boabu needs were being addressed, which, um, I mean, Boabus don't do dog sport typically, you know, so, uh, and the the maintenance the much lower maintenance dogs you know so the kinds of things that we needed in place um for the other breeds like the gsd the rottweilers the Dobermans, malinois um were not being addressed i mean with time a lot of people have made investments in high value dogs and then people didn't when sh didn't know how to buy the dogs what to look out when buying your, their breeding stock um at best, they were looking at the pedigree to see that um, the appearance of the dog they were buying had confirmation titles. You know, and I tell people all the time, I'm like, I mean, if you're buying a working breed, like a Doberman or a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd, and you focus exclusively on their confirmation, it's like going to uh, a beauty contest to, to recruit for the military. You know, there, there are other things that you need to look at, and that's the work achievements of the parents. 
you know, whether it's Kurang, whether it's um, IPO, whether it's um, ZTP and the score, you need to understand how they score, you know, and what they look at. Because, for instance, um, you get a confirmation show, a judge has to look maybe a whole day, but the judge is examining, say, 200 dogs or 300 dogs. Um, maybe like 200 dogs is more realistic. Um, whereas if they, you go to a ZTP, a ZTP is two days. It's a two-day event. The first day is for males, 15 males maximum. Second day, 15 females maximum. And it's a whole day. So the, the examination, even the physical examination of the dog is more thorough. It's more thorough. And, and then also, excuse me. And then also, Kura. And then also, um, the, the, there's temperament testing. You know, whether um, to check the dog's bravery and to check the dog's defense drive and everything. You know, so, so for me, that's a more thorough examination. And that is what I look at. You know, in addition to that, you want the dog, if, if the breeder so wishes, um, they may take the dog to a confirmation show as well. You know, so that then you know that it's not just the physical beauty that the, that the breed has been able to achieve, you know, but also achieves the temperamental um, quality that is required of the breed. You know, and for ZTP, they are examining the dog against the ideal breed, um, breed specification. You know, because every breed has, every breed has its specification. And so for ZTP, they are measuring the dog against 100%. Which is which is the ideal, you know. Whereas, um, say you go to a double man show, um, they are comparing the dogs to each other, you know, to see which one is closest to the breed spec, you know. In the so so it's two different things. One of them they are comparing everybody in the field to see who is closest to the breed spec, and then in a ZTP they are comparing the dog each dog to the breed spec by on its own you know and so for me that's one of the things that i think um has brought more knowledge because i noticed that a lot of people are breed um for the german shepherd guys um the leading breeders in the german shepherd space and then the raw wildlife space especially i have noticed that they are improving their breeding stock because now they're looking at these things that are pertinent to get me a quality dog. Okay, Mr. Anda, I remember um, the last time we had a conversation that was at the KUG Dog Show at 2019. I remember that you said that you started with, um, I think you mentioned something about the German Shepherd, you having a German Shepherd, and later you switched on to the Dobermans. And I think for about 30 years, been about 30 years now, if I can really remember the conversation well. So why did you choose the Doberman as a breed? Okay, I mean, truth be told, the dogs we had back in the day, I will not call breeding quality dogs. They were pet quality, especially my German Shepherd. She definitely was not a 100% uh, German Shepherd, you know, back in the day. Um, that being said, I mean, the, the Royal Wilder was purebred, the Blue Mastiff was purebred, that we had, we had imported from South Africa. Or somebody imported for South African and I bought. Um, the Doberman was bred here in Ghana, but um, the thing about the Doberman is the level of intelligence. You know, in as much as I think it is a superior breed to a lot of um, the other breeds in the market or available, um, it's not the dog for everybody because Dobermans are intense. They and they, they're highly intelligent. You know, if and, and that's why training is important. Because if you do not direct a doberman on how to behave um, when it's growing up, it will teach itself. It will figure stuff out for itself. You know, you don't you don't want that to happen. Because more often than not, um, what it will the, the habits it will develop um, left to its own devices will not be what you want. You understand? So so. We have to guide the dogs in growth. It's like a kid, basically. I mean, if if you can just leave a kid to its own devices, you know, the level of in intelligence, I mean, and for 
the more intelligent the, the kid is, the more trouble we get into because it does it does trial error and all those kinds of things in playing. You know, so so um, that's that's how come. I mean, and so so basically, that's that's actually a good thing right there. You know, because it toughens them up. So this is character building for the puppies. So when you, um, I, I know I've deviated though, but when you bring up puppies together like this, the the puppies become as tough as the toughest puppy in the lit, in the lot in the litter. You know, even this though this is not definitely not the same litter. I like it that there's a feisty feisty um, French bulldog with the double man puppy. You know, it's all play and everything, but it, it toughens you up. I mean, it's like basically like human beings. Um, a lot of us are defined by the neighborhoods and experiences we get growing up. You know, that, that's basically what this is right here behind us. You know, yeah. So you were talking about the Doberman, how intelligent they are, and all of that. So, so when you check the history of the Doberman, it was. It was bred, like for most breeds, for a specific purpose, okay? Now, Louis Doberman was a tax collector, and then he, um, was the, he owned the dog pound in the city where he um, lived, you know? So, so he was wealthy, and he needed a dog that he could do his rounds for the tax collection. Of. So the Doberman is the only dog that was bred for personal protection. The other protective type dogs, like the German Shepherd Malinois, they're all shepherds. You know, they're livestock dogs. The Rottweiler livestock for cattle. You know, um, when you look at the Mastiff type dogs, for the Dogo Argentino, um, which I have one Dogo Argentino, the Dogo Argentinos were bred for hunting. Um, most of the other Mastiff breeds were bred for estate guard. You know, so the dogs are fine when they're just left to run around, you know. But the Doberman was bred for personal protection. So it is a, it's bred for human contact, close human contact. It doesn't do too well when you just leave it to those devices or, or you create it up or, or cage it up for extensive, extensive periods. You know, it gets destructive because um, they build up frustration, especially when it has no work to do. And when I say work, it's, I mean, we're doing training because we're simulating um, the kind of work that he was bred to do. You know, uh, because it's not every day that a thief is coming to your house or that those drives that are inherent in the dog are, are, are tested or are used by the dog. You know, so we have to give the dog an outlet for that to keep them calm. Otherwise, it builds up. It builds up and then, I mean, they get frustrated and destructive and it's a horrible story. Yeah. Lovely viewers, I'm sure you're, you're, you're loving the interview right here. Just as I told you, this place is Pioneers of Africa. Pioneers of Africa. And they are strictly into Dobermans. Dobermans. I'm sure you're loving the scenes in the background. And I'm right here with the boss man, Mr. Kobianda. In case this is your first time of watching a video on this channel, you kindly subscribe to the channel for us for more amazing and exclusive dog content. And this program is also proudly sponsored by Eminent Dog Feed and Poppy Milk. You want the right dog feed, very nutritious for your dogs. You want Poppy Milk for your puppies. Just link up with them. Their number is on our screen 0244 820 0 two four four eight two zero three five zero so i continue the conversation with mr anda very soon we'll take out the dogs that's my favorite part where we check out all of the dobermans right here their names and everything but then um, mr anda if somebody is looking out to get a doberman what, what is the person to expect since you mentioned earlier on that the doberman is not a bit for <laughs> just anybody yeah so um typically you need to have be ready to exercise the dog you know um i tell people I, i'm like it doesn't have to be as hectic as what we do here um you can as long as the dog gets about four to five kilometers walk maybe like twice or thrice a week it'll be fine you know because it needs a positive way to expend the energy you know if you don't do that um, it's going to dig up your garden. 
it will rip stuff up, you know, because it's a strong dog, it's a powerful dog, and it needs an outlet, you know. So, so I mean, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's the perfect balance of a pet and a guardian, you know, at the same time. And, and the other thing, too, about the double man that I, um, I'm, that, that for me, favors it is, is that, that it has a short coat. You know, so even if it sheds, or even when it sheds, um, it doesn't cause as much of a mess as, say, even a short coat German Shepherd would. You know, Rottweilers have much longer fur and everything. So for me, I mean, if you notice, I mean, the Dogo Argentino has short hair, the Doma has short hair. And then the other side of it, too, is that if there's any skin condition um, that is forming, adverse skin condition that's forming, because of the short coat, you're able to notice it much quicker than if it was a longer coated dog. You know, um, the third part, I mean, it's obvious. Um, in the climate in which we live, it's much warmer than the climate that these breeds were developed in. You know, I mean, so you see that people in the temperate zones, which I think is unnecessary though, but they have sweaters and things for their dogmas. You know, I, I, well, I, 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 don't, I don't subscribe to that kind of stuff. You know, but I mean, for our weather here, I think that the, the, a short coat dog like a dog man, um, I mean, the Boa Bulls, most of the Mastiff breeds to have short coats. But in, even in spite of that, um, dogs over, get overheated. You know, so like I mentioned earlier in our earlier conversation, um, when we're training, we don't train when the sun is up. We end training when the sun comes up. So we train, we have up to about 9 a.m. to train. So normally, typically, we start from about 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. up to about 9 o'clock in the morning. And then we pick up after 6 p.m., you know. And because of that, um, it, when you go to the field, you notice that we, we have floodlights on the field so that we can work in the dark because that's when the temperature is most conducive. Yeah. When I came here, just as I mentioned earlier, I was, I was really impressed with the whole training and everything. But Mr. Anda, do you think um, the Doberman breed stands out amongst the other breeds? I think the Doberman is the most elegant dog. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, I'll mean, i give you an example of what a couple, I think about a year ago or so, um, one of my friends who breeds um, German Shepherds, Lion Kennel, big up to Lion Kennel, they're doing... They're doing a lot of good stuff. I mean, they, they actually um, inspired me to restart breeding. Yeah, because after I saw the dogs that they had and spoke to the owners of Lion Kennel, I figured that I had a dog, somebody, I'd finally met somebody who was serious enough about breeding um, for me to also get into breeding. You know, because you cannot, in my mind, you, you cannot be too far ahead of the market. And I had decided that if I was going to ever breed again, I was going to breed at the top of the global standard. My dogs have to be competitive, as competitive as the best breeder in the world for governments. You know, that's not what the focus of was for most of the breeders before, before that. I mean, they were just producing dogs without actually understanding what they were doing or what they needed to do. You know, so after I met Lion Kennel, I, I figured that at least there was one person um, who had made that investment, and it was about time uh, for me to get started again if I was going to do ever do it. Because even though I was not breeding, I'd been around the dogs, I mean, industry for the longest time. Even when I wasn't in the country, people were calling me, uh, like when they wanted puppies, and I'm like, I'm, so I direct, you know, and so practically, for practically, um, most of the breeders who, who are doing things right, um, f all the way from Babu breeders and everything, I've sold puppies and I, I used to sell and I still sell puppies for them, you know. But basically for me, um, in breeding, the ethical breeding is not, a, you don't become a salesman, you know, you, rec you make referrals. You know, so people come here, people come to see me or call me because they know I have good dogs, but they don't want the double man. They want the German shipping. So I'll tell them, I'm like, these are the best um, German Shepherd breeders that I know of. I've seen their dogs and I like them, you know, and I'll recommend them. So I pass on the numbers, you know, or Boa Bull, I'm like, these, these are people who are doing good quality Boa Bulls, you know. Um, 
uh, where when you get the, the 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 problem is when you get into becoming too business like about about this whole space, you invariably will end up cutting corners and selling dogs that you're not sure of the quality. You pass off dogs that are not necessarily good quality. Now, um, my kennel is called Pioneers of Africa because I started breeding to show the way how things are supposed to be done. Because I'd been talking for almost 10 years, for maybe like six, seven years, telling people what to do, how to do stuff. Um, but I figured that if I actually did it myself, I'll be demonstrating how to do things properly. And that will have a bigger impact. You know, that will allow people to understand what I've been talking about. You know, so that's basically what motivated me to get started. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Anda, talking about breeding in general, I know um, there's a whole lot of things that go into, a lot, whole lot of things that go into breeding. But um, most of the time, people think that like, having a male dog crossing it with a female is breeding. But then there seems to be some sort of terminology and the right way of doing things. I'd like you to really throw more light on that for my lovely viewers to also learn about the whole thing. Because I know most of people think that breeding is all about, oh, I have a male. Some people even cross with um, other breeds and they say they are breeding. I'd like you to really throw more light on that. Okay, so the first thing about breeding is you have to be able to establish the outcomes that you want to achieve you know so you need to have a breeding plan that's what we call a breeding plan now the breeding plan advises your breeding program you know so for the longest time i mean the first question i used to ask um, people when i was getting acquainted to the breeders because i typically i on my return to the country i visited almost every breeder in in accra and even kumasi i visited some of the people in kumasi too and the first question I asked each and every one of them was, what is your breeding plan? What is and your breeding program? Nobody was able to answer that question. You know, because if you're not able to describe very clearly what outcome you are trying to achieve, then you're not breeding, you're just producing. You know, and then there's no guarantee of the quality that you're producing. I mean, you're not even able to measure quality if you don't know what you're trying to achieve. All you're trying to get is a purebred government. That's what you get. But as to whether it is a good quality government or not, it's in question. You know, and uh, like for example, um, there are breeders who breed for show, confirmation. And without, and breed for lower temperament. You know, so you get I get questions all the time from people who have bought high quality or high value Dobermans or German Shepherds or Rottweilers, but the dogs don't have the requisite drives which are required of the breed. You know. So it's a sluggish dog, it has no drive. Um, I mean it won't you can't get it to do any defense work or any protection work, you know. But those things are inherent in the bloodlines. You know, so so you need to make careful calculations, and you must know what outcome you want to achieve. So, for instance, um, I've done two repeat crossings, two repeat mate meetings um, for two. Like I'm using G or Rel Ghana, we call him G. His as Ghanaian say, if he a G, you know, but his his, his official name that I goes the of course Kunedina Etuno. Is Real Ghana de Casa Fox. And then Juga Belt Ages too. So we cross. Juga doesn't have as much drive as my my dogs, but um, she comes from a very good uh, um, top confirmation line. You know, so for form, Juga is perfect. For function, she's wanting. You know, and then I have Cora, who's a much smaller dog. Um, her confirmation is okay, but she's not as impressive because she doesn't have the build that Juga has. But she has all the temperament. 
um, I'll put her temperament as something like 90 to 95 percent. Okay, whereas when you compare Juga to her temperament wise, Juga best case scenario is like 75, you know, or 70. Um, so those are the differences. And then I'm using G because um, out of my breeding males, he has the best temperament, the better temperament. You know, he's able to check all the boxes on the temperament tests and the work that we um, require of him. Um, Tipa is also good, but Tipa is weaker when it comes to the work ethic. Um, he's more playful. He does a lot of the stuff, but he's not doing it with the intensity that we expect him to do it. But he has a better form, you know. So there's all different balances and calculations that we have to do. It. So in the plan, um, these kids with the two females will be bred to Tipa. You know, and then I got two more, two new um, lines, um, Capo and Chairman Camelo, um, made in Sicily. And they're both for the next generation of breeding. You know, um, typically if I was in Europe, I wouldn't have to buy all those, those many meals. You know, because uh, the male will be, I mean, worst case scenario, say Togo or Nigeria, I'll be able to take my female for crossing. Because for Capo, for instance, he... His, his father is the German champion, I think two years straight, you know. Um, so he comes, um, Franjo. Franjo travels around Europe mating, you know. So they look at the orders and then he comes into Italy. He's there for like six months. And then he goes to, say, Slovenia for like a month. That's crossing and then he moves around because he's honored to move around, you know. So that's basically how it works. But because of the lack of... Um, High quality meals. We have. I have to make that investment in meals. And the other part of it too is that um, if I make the investment in meals, then it, it is not required for every breeder of dormants in Ghana to make the same investment because the meals are available locally. You know, so we have interest um, for start services from as far as Nigeria and on the other side, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso. You know, um, because of that, I'm expanding the facilities. You, um, you saw that I was building kennels yeah. and everything because the females will be coming in for boarding and then crossing. You know, and I get a lot of questions. I like, oh, I have a dorm. I bought a really good dorm, but it's not. It doesn't have the drive. You know, what what should I do? People see all the time. I'm, How can I make my dog wild? I tell people, I'm like, it's not wild. If it's the difference between a wild animal and a domestic animal, what they are talking about is of the protective drive. You know, and also people say. How do you make a dog aggressive? We don't want to make a dog aggressive. We want the dog to exhibit protective drives. You know, because if you breed for aggression, what you're going to end up with is a vicious dog. You know, and that's a dog that will attack without provocation. These dogs must stand their ground and attack only when it's necessary. They must be able to, they must be intelligent enough to discern between a threat and a non-threatening situation. You know, you don't want a dog that is is I mean it's, the way I explain it to people is that these dogs are like an AK-47. Now an AK-47 without a safety catch is a problematic weapon. It, you can shoot yourself. I mean and potentially kill yourself. You know you need to be safe around your own dog, and your whoever is your guest or your household needs to be safe around your own dog. You know. And so that's the difference between, I mean, back in the day, in the 70s and 80s, yes, we're breeding aggression into the dogs, but we're ending up with vicious dogs. And so there were, there's all news of dogs attacking owners, neighbors, and children, household members, you know. That's, that's the difference. We're not breeding for aggression anymore. We're breeding for drives, protective drives, defense drives. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for aggression. Anybody... And I see a lot of trainers, they're like, oh, I'm doing aggression work. It's not aggression work. I mean, anybody who says anything about aggression with a dog doesn't know what they're doing. Be it a trainer or a breeder, they, are not, they don't know what they're doing. You know, so that's what, those are some of the things that um, we, we're demonstrating. You know, like Cora came and put her head on your lap. Yeah. This is your first time here. But because she sees my body language towards you, she knows that you are fine, you're cool. If it was a threatening situation, I mean, this arm, um, she can, Koras has the best bite of all my dogs. She's the smallest, but she has the best bite. I mean, she can break your forearm with a bite easily. 
I mean, you see, you see, I, I bypass and everything. They're all in shreds. I move all. We've had to order new stuff. I mean, probably every six months we'll have to replace our stuff because they rip it up. That in training. Nice one, lovely viewers. Um, we'll be wrapping up the interview very soon, and then we get to my favorite part where we check out the dogs. And I'm sure you're loving today's episode on GH Dog TV. Lots of information being poured out by the boss of Pioneers of Africa, who goes by the name Mr. Kobe Under. Uh, Mr. Kobe, before we, we, we get to where we check out the dogs and all of that, I'd like you to drop out your social media handles, your contact details, just in case somebody wants to link up with you for advice, puppies, training, for stood, whatever. Okay, so we have, um, we're both on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we're act both active on Facebook and Instagram. We may have some other handles, but they're not as active. And so on Facebook, we have a page, um, Pioneers of Africa Kennels, or just, I think it's Pioneers of Africa Kennels, or just Pioneers of Africa, right? Um, Facebook, um, and then just like it and then follow. Uh, and then also um, on Instagram. Instagram On Instagram, we have one page that is dedicated to the kennel. So it's also Pioneers of Africa. And then we have a second page, um, with, which is called uh, Holistic Canine um, Center and Activity Center. Um, that's for the training, you know, because I want to devolve the breeding from the training. Um, because the money, the breeding is my my business. The training is my trainer's business. So ultimately, I rent the facility to him in exchange for his training my dogs. So, um, like we have a couple of pit bulls here for training. Those are his client dogs. You know, uh, we, and then there's a Rottweiler too. Those are his client dogs that he's using my facilities to train. You know, so it's a kind of an exchange. The only thing that um, I charge him extra is if, if his, the dogs have to eat my dog's food. Okay, so um, the best way to reach me, my most preferred way and the best way to reach me is by WhatsApp, you know, on my number. And if you don't add the plus 233 to my number, you won't see me on WhatsApp. Um, so it's plus 233-242-313-385. That's the most reliable WhatsApp to get me on. Um, but also, I respond to messages on the, on the social media handles as well. Um, but if you want, um, the WhatsApp I respond to more quicker, much quicker than um, I, I respond to the other, the other um, channels. But I, I try to respond to everybody. Nice one, lovely viewers. Now, th this is um, what we have for you today on GH Dog TV. Now, we get into my favorite part where we check out the dogs. But then, before we go, um, Mr. Anda, our proud sponsors, Eminent Dog Feed, wants us to do a giveaway for you right here. They have some dog bowls here. Yeah, and then some sample dog feeds too, as well. And then, a try them out. I mean, if they're sponsoring you, they must be worth trying out. Yeah, so we're going to try out the MN dog feed, the samples that they've given to us, and then we'll give you feedback. Okay? For sure, and then some caps and other stuff to pioneers Thank of. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Big shout outs to Eminent Dog Feed and Poppy Mock. Lovely viewers, um, this is my favorite part where we get to check out the dogs right here. We're going to check out the dogs right here at Pioneers of Africa. So stick and stay, don't go anywhere. We get to my favorite part. We check out the dogs. Looking for a complete balanced and highly nutritious feed for your dogs? Then your answer is here. Feed Eminent. Carefully composed and filled with a high level of protein of animal origin, Eminent Dog Feed provides your dogs with the adequate amount of energy to keep them in the perfect condition. Contact Eminent Dog Feed on 0244-820-350. Looking for quality? Feed Eminent. Okay, so we are at my favorite part where we check out the dog, and this is the first dog right here. Mr. Ander, um, I'd like you to tell us something about this dog, the name and everything. Okay, this is Pioneers of Africa, Africanus. Okay. Um, he's from our first litter. We had um, only one, one puppy. So his full name is actually Africanus Singleson. Okay. Um, Singleson. Yeah, um, he belongs to somebody, but he's here for training, 
um, for the confirmation show and then some refresher training on um, obedience and protection work as well. Yeah, he's 18 months, 19 months now. Lovely viewers. Now let's check out African News right here. Such a beautiful boy right here at Pioneers of Africa Kennels. Bosman, what about our lovely friend here as well? This is Ace Ankora. Ace is um, about three years old. Um, she's my best dog right now. Um, and I bought her. She's the anchor of the breeding program. You know, that's actually what I um, advised her name. Because Ankora is anchor in Italy, in Italian. Um, yeah, so Ace Ankora. Um, we've had one litter from her, but it was only one puppy. Actually, two litters. We lost all the puppies from the first litter to Pavo. Um, the second litter was only one puppy. So we're re breeding the same combination because we're hoping to get a female from the combination that we use for the next generation of our breeding plan. Yeah. Nice one, lovely viewers. Now let's check out Anko right there. Ankora right there. This is Q-Tip de Casa Fox. Um, comes from top lines. Uh, his mother was 2016 champion in Italy. Um, Blackie Spirit de Casa Fox. Um, we use Tip. Tip is also in our breeding program. Um, but he's in the second generation. We're not using him on our females for the first generation. One, because for Juga, he's too closely related to Juga. They all. Um, come from UT, UT Del Nasi lines. They were all line bred on UT Del Nasi, who's one of the most outstanding dogs at confirmation. Um, and because of, of the, um, they are coming from heavy confirmation lines, they are not able to have a very strong work ethic. You know, so we have, we're willing to find the balance between the confirmation and then the, the drive, the, um, the temperament. Okay, so um, with the females that we're going to get um, from G, um, they'll have, like, the expectation is that they'll have a very good temperament and they'll breed back to Tipper. Yes, to get the height and the build. That's basically what he's here for. But we use him for outside dogs too. I mean, he's open to start uh, to approve females. We'll check out the female if she looks good and we like her. Um, and you can pay. <laughs> you can, you can tip her across your dog. So that's cute to be as a fox for you. Okay, okay. And what about our lovely friend here too? Um, this is real Ghana de Casa Fox. Okay. Um, he's also from Top Top Lines. Um, his mother, um, Janila Black de Casa Fox, um, was champion in I think 2017 in Italy, the whole of Italy. I mean, it was open to European competition. Um, out of maybe like 200 or more dogs um, for the females, she was um, the champion. And he was named by the breeder specifically for me. Um, yes, because um, when he got the dog, because of what I told him I wanted to do here um, when I was buying Q-Tip, um, he decided when he had, um, when um, G was born, we call him G, so when G was born, um, he, he called me and he said, look, I have the dog that you want. And I said, but I'm not, I haven't told you I'm looking for a dog to buy. You know, and he said, well, but I have the dog that you need. You know, and I said, I'm not looking for a dog to buy. I don't have a budget right now. He said, look, the dog is here. Come and take him and pay whenever you get the money. So I went to Italy and picked him up. Um, I paid for him about six months after I saved up the money. 
Yeah. So you see, that's the kind of relationship that you need to build. Um, when you are clear with your objectives and honest upfront with the breeder, they'll pick what you need. You know, you cannot tell the quality of a better a puppy better than the breeder can. You know, so you have to open up, um, be honest about it. Hopefully, you get a good breeder. You know, because it's not also not guaranteed that the breeder is a good breeder that will give you their premium quality puppies. A lot of breeders want to keep their puppies close by them to use in their breeding plan later on. You know, um, but um, Stefano, um, thanks to Stefano, he wants to make a mark. Um, I told him what we, we needed in this part of the world and he, he gave me G. Okay, and so this is um, the last dog we are presenting, even though there are lots of dogs right here in this kennel, this is the last dog we are presenting. So the number of pioneers of Africa is right there on our screens. Yes, if you want to check out the other dogs, you want to link up with pioneers of Africa, just pick the number on our screen. So Mr. And, um, can you tell us something about this dog here too? Okay, so this is pioneers of Africa, Bellatrix. Bellatrix is um, the daughter of real Ghana and Juga Beltages. Um, from our uh, second litter. The second litter is the B litter. So they're all, there's Bugatti, Bellatrix, um, Bradley, um, I can't remember all the names. Um, yeah, so there's like five or six of them. Yes, but she's my dark angel. Um, she's also on co-ownership. Uh, she just come back to get trained. Uh, and so after the show, she's going to, the show next month, she's going to go back to her owner. Yeah. What I love about her is her coat. Yes, um, yeah, so that's like the first indication of the, um, the health of the dog. Yeah. So we pay particular attention to it. If the coat is off, off sheen, the sheen of the coat is off a little bit. I mean, there's something wrong with the nutrition that you're feeding the dog. You know, so it's one of the little things that we pay attention to. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do a walk with her so that you can, yeah. Okay, dog lovers, I'm sure you love today's episode on GH Dog TV. Today we visited Pioneers of Africa Kennels, and I'm sure you love the Dobermans right here. In case this is your first time of watching a video on this channel, you kindly subscribe to our channel and then you hit on the notification bell icon. For more exclusive and amazing dog content, this program was proudly sponsored by Eminent Dog Feed and Poppy Milk. You want the right dog feed for your dogs. Poppy Milk, just link up with them. 0244-820-350. 0244-820-350. This is where we bring today's episode to an end. My name is Solo One. You can call me the dog blogger. Catch you another time. GH Dog TV. Your number one TV for all dog lovers.